is On The Ledge podcast and I am your host, Jane Perrone. I like to think of myself as the Sarah Koenig of houseplants, leaving no stone unturned in pursuit of information about why your cactus died. A few weeks back, I travelled to South London and the home of Rob Stakovitz, who lives in a Victorian terraced home stuffed to the gunnels with gorgeous houseplants. He gives me a tour and explains why companion planting really works for houseplants. I've also been thinking and planning for the so long, and I've decided to break up some of the information into bite-sized advice and drop it into a series of episodes to help you get your ducks in a row ready for sowing over the next few weeks. So in next week's episode, I'm going to be looking at where to buy your seed. I've got lots of suggestions, but if you do have any good sources, then do let me know in the coming weeks so I can add that in. Thanks to Rebecca and Cody for becoming Ledge Ends this week and to Beth and Jennifer who've become crazy plant people. They're all helping me reach my target of 100 patrons in time for my 100th episode. That's just seven more to go. And once I've reached that target, hopefully well before my 100th show, all of my patrons will be getting an exclusive digital artwork. If you want more details of how to become a patron, just visit janeperone.com where you'll find my show notes. But enough housekeeping, it's time to get on with the show. You will recognise Rob Stakovitz's voice because he did have a little cameo in the James Wong episode. And then we heard from him again in my live show from the RHS Urban Garden Show with Alice Fowler. Rob is a garden designer and a master of horticulture, so this guy really knows his stuff. I was so intrigued by some of the stuff that Rob had to say that I knew I had to visit him at home and see some of his plants in the flesh. After a very blustery walk from the tube station, I ended up at Rob's gorgeous house, keen to have a look around, and he was kind enough to show me all of his beautiful plants. The interview splits into two parts. There's a tour to start with, then we'll break for our question of the week and come back for our visionary talk about the future of houseplants in part two. As always, please do click on to janeperone.com while you're listening to check out the show notes where you'll see lots of lovely photos of Rob's interior and his plants and also names for all the plants that we mention in the show. And as usual, the interview starts with me getting a little bit overexcited. Oh, this is so cool. I, the first thing that's drawing my eye is your lovely Tillandsia display. Yeah. So I'm terrible with Tillandsias. That's a um, Coralus contorta that okay. had died in the client's garden. So oh. I, um, I thought that will make a perfect uh, 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 sort of display for my um, air plants. But then, of course, I didn't get around to doing that for oh. ages. So I just had this branch knocking around for ages. <laughs> um, but then it sort of sits quite happily there, yeah. sort of fusing the roots as a, as yeah. a support. Yeah, that's really good. That's really a good idea. That's a really Just while you're down there, um, if I turn it round, this is uh, Tillandsia chirulia, I think, which is scented. If you can get in there, oh yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Sorry, it's all right. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, that's Just nice. Like quite sweetly scented. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, yeah, but so small that you sort of can't quite get to it. Yeah, it's a, sort of... <laughs> a danger of poking your yeah, eye out. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I, you know, things that you can just kind of, those hidden delights are oftentimes the things that um, delight me when I'm, I'm looking at plants. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, so um, my shelves, uh, rather than having uh, rows of pots, I thought I'd just put some uh, window boxes up on yeah. the wall and then just have loads of plants stuffed into them. Uh, this is a so lovely. This is a lovely stone. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, well, box. I'm not sure if it's stone or whatever, actually. Or it? it might be um, asbestos. They used to make pots. Yeah, from that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but these are like the perfect size because they're really um, deep that's, yeah, and uh, uh, quite long as well. And mm. um, if you look at the big windows, the Victorian windows mm. here, that I think they used to make them to fit just uh, along. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, so uh, done a done a um, smaller trough up here with uh, some trailing tillandsias and uh, not tillandsias, tradescantias. Uh huh. It rhymes. <laughs> Which is a bonus. Um, so yeah, a few different plants in there. Yeah. There's um, that cypressia, uh, little bromeliads with sort of silvery leaves. Uh, Poilea. Glaucophila, I think that is. Uh huh. Uh, cordyline, cordyline terminalis. Mm-hmm. Quite like those dark-leaved ones. And another Freesia. That's uh, Freesia fosteriana rubra. Oh, nice. There's one on the other side as well. Oh, yeah. uh, sort of mirrors it. Uh, mm. Type mm. the two together. And what's the fern on the end there? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> ferns sure are very, ferns yeah. are very hard, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Ferns yeah. are hard to identify um, unless it's something obvious. There's, there's, uh, yeah, unless it's obvious. But the thing is, because lots of ferns all grow uh, quickly from spore, mm. um, the 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 suppliers just grow sort of just a random mix of ferns mm-hmm. and then uh, put them into a, like a tray of mixed ferns. That, yep. that come in from Holland and you don't know what could be in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's good though because you might find something really rare yeah, and unusual yeah, yeah, in the mix. Yeah. You well, never you, know. You do, you do find sort of uh, quite, quite odd things that you would never expect mm, but mm. Um, it's always good even the smallest garden centre or nursery you'll always find something sort of a bit unusual yeah I, that's true I've had that's happened to me a few times uh, recently where I found something that is I, I found a pilea micro was it pilea microphyll of the artillery plant mm-hmm. uh, in a stuffed in a tray of other plants and um, yeah I've had several people I've actually managed to kill that now because I did an ex- <laughs> I did an experiment putting it in a in a trough with some other things which I wasn't very happy with yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah I did manage to kill that unfortunately I yeah. now need to get some cuttings back off the person I gave cuttings to mm. <laughs> but um yeah that that's that is a good thing to be able to do and I guess that's where your eye comes in for spotting unusual things yes yeah and the other thing is I do um uh one thing that I've been uh sort of moving away from is just going for the rare and unusual plants I'm sort of coming back around again to to sort of basics and going back to uh, plants that are just very easy to grow and difficult to kill mm-hmm. and just trying to use them in different ways. Mm-hmm. So uh, in this part of, uh, just here by the by the big windows, I've uh, painted the walls this um, sort of teal colour. It's a really nice colour. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I just wanted it, I think it sets the plants up quite nicely, mm. um, but I just want to try and play with like the background colour and then just put some uh, common plants in front of mm. it, like mm. um, uh, I planted a load of um, the Nephrolepsis ferns just in under this Kentia palm mm-hmm. uh, and then poked in sort of uh, you know, nephrolepsis is so common, uh, but then I planted these Vriesias and um, uh, this is Neo Regelia as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you see this one at yeah. the front? It's this oh, yeah. one with like really black leaves. Oh, yes. It's quite amazing that mm. the plant can develop such a dark colour leaf, but yeah. uh, I just wanted it sort of greens and the black stripes of the uh, Freesia um, splendens and hieroglyphica. And this goes back to what you were talking about when we were at uh, James Wong's in that you've got yeah. a big pot with lots of things planted in it and they're yes, all benefiting yeah. from the microclimate and presumably don't need a lot of watering because you've got a good volume of yeah, plants in exactly. there so it's yeah. quite low main- making it quite low maintenance yeah. and then is this a howier? Yes, yeah, yeah. So you've got that doing its thing. Yeah, looking. so that's like the canopy layer and then mm-hmm. the, the sort of forest <laughs> floor layer yeah. uh, in this one large part is full of uh, uh, ferns and these bromeliads as well, which I think sort of is quite pleasing. And of course, this harrier is right at home in a Victorian home because this yeah, is how yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it's like the traditional. Yeah, this is where it should be, exactly. 
Is that a grow light in this large? Yeah, I think it is. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got a grow so, light um, helping just, out. Just, uh, just a lamp that, um, you know, it's nice to have uh, lighting on the palm anyway, but uh, that also just gives a bit more light to the uh, bromeliads below. Mm, and there's mm. um, another pot full of um, this uh, Calathea mosaica. This is such a popular plant now, isn't yeah, it? And I, yeah. I have heard from from um, from uh, North One Garden Centre, Paul Holt. Yeah. He told me that this is one of the easiest mm. of the family to look after. And I have to say, mine yeah. is way smaller than this, but it does seem to be quite easy. And it just yeah, has these yeah. amazing patterns on the leaves, which yeah, look a bit it's like... Sort of, uh, when you look up close, it's like there's millions of little rectangles yeah it's like almost like a barcode or something on yes, the leaves yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it does seem to be um, relatively simple to look after relative to the family's legendary trickiness in yes, winter time yeah, as well yeah. it um, does seem to be a tough one and yeah. uh, uh, again I just quite like that combination of the there's like the dark green and then the lighter green and then against the teal background on the wall there it's sort of quite a good combination. Is this a particular like farrow and ball yes, potato harvest so. or something? Yeah, they always have funny um, names don't they? What's I think it's Vardo. <laughs> Vardo, I think it's Vardo okay, for, nice. if I can remember whatever that means but uh, yeah it's uh, it's a good colour because it sort of changes depending on the light mm, so mm. Um, under artificial light it's much greener uh, and in, next to the window here, it's a bit more of a bluey colour. Yeah. But um, yeah, I have this calathea next to, um, so that's mosaic, uh, sort of sounds a little bit like mosaic. And this is um, Vriesia hieroglyphica, which I think um, uh, sort of links in with the sort of patterning on the, mm. on the leaves, sort of like hieroglyphics. Yeah, yeah, so I, it's I an amazing leaf pattern. I like to go with a bit of a patterned leaf sometimes. Yeah, no, that's really beautiful. And especially against the plain but complex leaf of the howia. I think yes, that's a really yeah. nice effect. Yeah, and the nice deep green. Did you have you, did you bought buy this as a mature plant? Have you had it for many years? This no, area? no, I bought I bought this uh, a few months ago, but um, this was an eBay purchase. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, an eBay purchase where I just had to collect it from about five minutes away uh, is ideal. And also, um, it had been grown for a number of years, so I knew that I was getting a plant that was fully acclimatized to. Um, mm. To, to indoor conditions so the mm. palms that they bring over from Holland they're always sort of really really straggly and sort of um, stretched out mm. uh, tell all it, that tender growth that's yes, about yeah. that's ready to be kind of exposed to dry air and then to get yeah, really miserable yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, so I know this one's a tough one and it's got this nice like the leaves are so dark green but then the new leaf is sort mm. of this uh, more of a apple green or mid green yeah just coming through so would you recommend that as a way of buying plants like keeping an eye out on things like craigslist and ebay for mature plants that are being possibly a little bit neglected and, and yes, somebody wants yeah, rid yeah. well not they're not always neglected sometimes they just outgrew their space mm. um this was uh growing in someone's quite small front room and it was taking about half the room up so right. uh i think i was sort of uh, doing them a favour, you know, in their eyes. And can I ask what you paid for it? Was <laughs> yeah, it... it was thirty pounds. That's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know what you paid for that, like from a nursery, but oh, from a nursery, you'd get a plant about, you know, a foot or two tall. Yeah. Well, that was a good buy then. I yeah. guess as long as you can check it over and make sure you're not bringing in yes, major yeah, pest problems. Pests, but um, yeah, uh, I I do get a few pests here, so it's sort of. Um, uh, washing plants down. I sometimes take plants into the shower and give them yeah. a shower to uh, to just sort of wash any pests off. But um, uh, it's just keeping an eye on things. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a good buy by the look of it. You've yeah, got to keep your yeah, eyes peeled on these local uh, auction sites and things for good plants. I, I yeah, I've it, mostly where I live, it tends to be people selling like very dead looking. I, mean, I have been looking on Facebook for things in mm. case anything interesting has come up and it mainly seems to be people selling either their 
grandmother's cactus collection which is kind of covered yeah. in mealybug or yeah. something that's yeah half dead and you just think and they want 200 pounds for it i think yeah. that's the trouble yeah. with yeah. generally people don't have an idea very much of an idea of what house plants are worth or what the no, no. so it does it, tend to be you either get a bargain or it's ridiculously it, overpriced it also varies um just like in 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 the trade mm. um in go- some garden centres, you'll pay huge amounts for um, exactly the same plant as in another, you know, smaller mm. nursery or wherever. Mm. Uh, so it's difficult. And then uh, if you go to places like um, uh, in London, we've got Columbia Road Flower Market, uh, which you sort of think, oh, it's cheap and it's really busy here. Mm. Um, but I've f- found plants in garden centres and nurseries that are the same price. Mm. So it's mm. just sort of, I guess it's just shopping around. And mm. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, it d- depends. You know, if there's a plant that you really want, then you just, it's best to go for it. It's what the market will tolerate, what you'll tolerate, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this table of, well, it's got two begonias on it. I'm not yes. sure what the other plant is, though, or the other two plants are. Tell me about these ones. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm not sure what this little leafy thing is. Ooh. I was given that. I uh, think it looks like... A peperomia. I think it, it looks like what I've got, which is peperomia bangroana. Okay. But I could be wrong. That's what I was sold mine as. Okay. And it looks very similar to that with the very, yes, very yes. small round leaves. Um, but that, I, that may be... I, I remember Googling it and coming up with basically no results. <laughs> so is it might that, be... Is that one that they, so I've seen it um, in uh, little hanging baskets? I don't know. I think I, I've seen the... Quite Paleo possibly. ...has this sort of trailer. Mm. Anyway, this is a, um, a cycad. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and more specifically, it's macrosamia. Macrosamia is um, ma- uh, really, really uh, elegant um, cycad that has uh, leaves that are almost like feathers. They're really, really um, very fine. Uh, they look like sort of like, just like lots of cycads, mm. like a sort of plastic palm, but this is sort of particularly <laughs> fine and elegant. Uh, and then um, Begonia carolinae, I think it is, mm-hmm. and uh, Luxurians, which um, that sort of made a comeback over the winter months. I think it, because I had it by the window here um, last summer, it sort of got too hot for it. Mm. So I didn't realise that they actually do better during the cooler times of year. Um, this is my maybe, nemesis, this plant. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, although, like yours, mine is doing well now. Yeah. Um, I really struggled with this plant since I got it as a, as a, as a plug from mm. Dibley's a couple, about 18 months ago, two years ago. But it's finally coming good. Mine is, mm. yeah, it's, it, it, I found it really hard to keep it happy at first, but I seem to have found that happy yes, medium. Yeah, but it is yeah. a beautiful begonia. And really, neither of these, if you said, oh, that's a begonia, a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, it doesn't really look like yeah. a begonia at all. It I mean, looks, they look more like Schefflera, mm. or um, I was a bit worried having this one by the window, uh, the Luxurians by the window, because it does look a little bit like um, cannabis. But <laughs> yes, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> uh, you could um, be mistaken. I, I just hope that people are sensible enough not to assume it is. And well, yeah, you, one would hope so. Yeah, one would hope yeah, so. Yeah. Although I'm sure if you tried to smoke that, probably wouldn't do you any good no. whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> And you've got quite a few um, of the classic prayer plant, uh, Maranta. Uh, what's the second part of that? My mind's gone blank. Uh, the the, the so herringbone my, plant, I think, is yes. the other common name that we would know it by. Now, this one, this plant is driving me crazy. Or more specifically, its sister plant, the one with the white uh, mm-hmm. ribs as opposed yes. to the red ribs. Because yes. everybody seems to be... It's in. It, it used. I remember seeing mm. it regularly years ago, and mm. now it seems to be impossible to get hold of. Mm. I think they're selling it as lemon lime. Anyway, okay. if anyone has one of those, contact me. <laughs> uh, but this is a wonderful plant, and I remember this. My parents having this, and it being such a common plant, and it's really only in the last few years come back. It's such a great yes, plant, yeah. though, isn't it? I just think it's um, so easy and uh, sort of. 
easy to please as well. And I just think the leaves are quite incredible, like the the patterns on there. Um, uh, I mean, it looks artificial, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I am drawn to lots of plants that just look artificial, <laughs> which is a bit worrying. Um, but uh, the other thing I noticed was some of the um, the purple on the underside it sort of sort of shimmers a little bit, or there's, mm. I mean, sort of shimmers uh, uh, sort of in an iridescent way, mm. um, depending on the light. But as you know, yeah. I did the, and of um, course you're... the installation, which was all iridescent mm. um, plants or um, iridescence in nature. The the one plant, um, which I don't have uh, in this room, it's uh, the iridescent um, Selaginella. It's sort of taking a winter rest mm. at the moment. Mm. It's sort of died back a little bit but I heard that they like cool conditions so mm -hmm. um, I'll bring it into the warmth uh, later in the spring and mm -hmm. uh, let it let it grow back on again yeah. um, but these uh, Maranta are growing uh, uh, well I planted them around the base of my uh, current pride and joy which is this Strelitzia which I'm very yes. pleased that you've been able to visit with at least one flower on it um, it did have two uh, flowers before this one, and it's just on its last legs. You see the uh, mm. uh, old petals are just starting to go over, but um, lots of weeks of interest with that. And uh, even if it doesn't have flowers, the, uh, the leaves are very sculptural and um, very exotic looking. I've been no noticing this plant being sold a lot in garden centres with a fake, talking about fake plants, Yes, a fake flower spike stuck into the juvenile plant which is obviously yeah. too young to flower and i wonder what how many people realize whether a this is this is this part of the plant is fake and b whether people i guess people buy them they must sell but it's fascinating to see but the crazy thing about it is you really have to get up close and examine that do, flower to be sure that it is fake so i guess i can see the appeal in that you're getting a uh, inverted commas flowering plant I think it's Way very earlier. clever marketing, it and is. I remember buying, uh, being drawn to those cacti with the little straw flowers stuck onto yes. them. Yes, the Helichrysum uh, when, flowers when, or whatever they yeah, were. Yeah. When, when I first got sort of started my interest in, in in plants and gardening, and I bought one of these things, and I was so disappointed when I realised they were fake and <laughs> yes. glued on. But yeah. uh, I think um, if you're interested in uh, plants and gardening, you sort of gradually sort of learn your way around you know marketing and the um the catalogues that have all the uh all the colors sort of mm. really sort of intense and much more intense than in reality so yeah. uh uh yeah no. you learn you do learn to be wary of these things but in a way as i say in a way i can kind of see see where they're coming from it is such a, an unusual and dramatic flower I read something about the. Uh, I'm, I have to look this up again. It was to do with the shape of the flower and the name "Bird of Paradise," and it was kind of explaining that it's not the, the people assume that's supposed to be that the, the the main flower is supposed to be the bird's head, but oh, actually yes, yeah. it was saying, well, no, it's the bird flying. It represents a, the whole bird I flying. Does little, that? Yeah, I saw a little a cartoon about it. Yeah, and I realised I had been guessing it wrong all this time. Yeah, same here. So they say that. Um, the 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 sort of uh, bud is like the sort of beak, and then mm -hmm. the petals are like the crest. But actually, if you imagine that this is the the point of the bud is the tail, mm -hmm. and this is sort of the beak, the stem is the beak yes. pointing down towards the plant, and then uh, the petals are the wings. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a hummingbird. Yes, sort of shape, yeah, it makes makes that? sense once you visualise it. It yeah, makes perfect but, sense. You know, I saw. <laughs> Uh, when I was in Madeira recently, I saw millions of these mm. um, strelitzias, you know, on every roundabout in all the gardens. Um, uh, and uh, I didn't realise until a few weeks ago that mm. that's actually why it's called the Bird of Paradise. Yeah, no, that that's same here, same yeah, here. It's amazing yeah. how suddenly your, your vision of something yes. just completely changes. Yes. And we have to talk about Hoya linearis, which you've got hanging up here. Yes. Um, 
I wish mine was that long. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep taking too many cuttings of mine. That's part of the problem. But that's yeah. looking lovely and healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We had I had my Hoyer expert on the other the other week, and he did say, "Oh, if you if you're growing linearis, that means that you've got a green thumb. You're good at growing stuff because it's not that easy." So, yes. Yes. But um, my, as I say, mine's just small because I keep giving away cuttings and yes, um, yeah, yeah. never letting it get too long. I just think it's probably the most sort of graceful, mm. um, elegant. Uh, trailing into a plant that there mm. is, I can't really think of another one that's that's as nice as this. So, yeah. uh, not this particular one, just the species mm. is such mm. a good one. If that hasn't made you want to go out and buy a giant Kenchia palm on eBay, I don't know what will. We'll be back with Rob shortly, but first we've got question of the week, which comes from Stacy, who appropriately enough wants to know about their bird of paradise. Stacy writes, I bought a three and a half to four foot bird of paradise in a 10 inch pot from a local hardware store. The one pot held two large fans and one smaller one. Is it too crowded? Should I split them? Well, this is a bit of a perennial problem with buying house plants and the decision you have to make when you come to get them home and decide exactly what's best for them. It's often the case too with things like palms and sometimes also things like ferns. Oftentimes nurseries will plant more than one plant into a pot so you've got several juvenile plants all packed together in one container to give a fuller and more mature look without actually having to spend the money on mature plants which obviously take longer to get to a bigger size on their own. Really there's two aspects to this Stacey. One is are the plants cramped together and fighting for space which is a really good reason to think about separating them out. The best way to tell is really just to take the plant out of the pot and have a look at the roots. Are the roots crammed around the side of the pot or is there plenty of space? If they're not crammed in there and they look pretty happy, I would say that you're fine to keep those plants grouped together in that container. Unless, of course, for aesthetic reasons you want to separate them out. Because you're after the drama of a single specimen plant. These plants grow from rhizomes under the surface and if you want to take a mature plant and divide up the rhizomes you can make more that way but that's not what we're talking about here because this is several young plants in the same pot by the sound of it so they should be fairly easy to separate out just by taking the plant out of its pot laying it out on a tarp or in an old washing up bowl and carefully teasing apart the root systems of the different plants and repotting separately. Given what we've been talking about with Rob Stakovitz today, I would be tempted to maybe leave them in a clump for the moment. If they're looking happy that way, there's always the option to separate them out as they grow bigger. Because, of course, grow bigger they will. They'll reach between three and five foot tall in the house once they reach maturity. It's also worth noting that the advice is generally that these plants will bloom better if they're a little bit pot bound. So if you want to maximise the blooms in the minimum time, then maybe it is worth keeping those three plants together. I don't know. It's a really a personal choice thing, Stacey, but I hope that's helped. And do let me know what you decide and how your Strelitzia is doing. Oh, and just to talk about what to plant one of these in. Well, personally, I would put this in some John Innes number three with a few extra handfuls of perlite or pumice or something similar to that to aid the drainage. If you've got a question for On The Ledge podcast, drop me a line. It's ontheledgepodcast at gmail.com. And now back to my chat with Rob. We sat on Rob's very comfortable and stylish sofas to have a chat about the future of the houseplant industry and us as growers. The worry is that we're in a fad, a faddish time yes. when houseplants are in fashion yes. and that this is all going to come crashing down. Yes, and it's a big worry of mine. Well, I don't, I don't stay awake at night, but I'm concerned that... Um, now that people have gone into um, loving houseplants and it's sort of all through social media um, how do we keep that going and I think lots of people will sort of copy what they see on Instagram and sort of recycle the same ideas and the same 
you know, the same setups that they photograph their plants in. And so what we end up seeing is loads of house plants, but they all look the same. Um, I mean, I said earlier that I like to uh, uh, grow sort of quite common species just because they're easy to grow. But when you start looking at those plants and using them in different combinations and in uh, different, uh, I think I think planting in groups is always effective, or planting uh, similarly coloured plants together also works well. But I think for for anyone that's grown house plants for a number of years, really it's 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 important that they then grow, I think, experiment a bit more with how they grow their plants and what they do with their plants because the beginners aren't going to be able to do that. You know, anyone can buy a plant and put it in a nice pot, but I think people that are experienced with houseplants need to start uh, trying to push the boundaries a bit more and showing pe- showing sort of uh, the general public what can be done um, I mean I've I've just done a few simple things here but you know I'm sort of experimenting myself and trying to push some boundaries where possible but for people that have uh, uh, the right conditions um, or the space as well is I guess is a big issue um, I'd like to see more exciting sort of setups available and I mean I've spoken to James about this as well uh, because he's created these sort of little uh, sort of miniature green walls that come up out of uh, his aquascapes and he's created these little habitats and uh, not habitats uh, uh, sort of um, recreations of habitats uh, but really, the, the the possibilities are endless, and I just want to see more new things and new ideas rather than the same, you know, plant in the pot type mm. thing on social media. How do we drive that? Is that the responsibility of gardeners and growers to push for more interesting stuff, or? Is it down to the suppliers to be more adventurous? How, how do we make that happen? I think it's not just down to the suppliers. I think it's down to the individuals uh, to uh, to really get quite creative with things. So, I mean, I put these um, air plants onto this branch, but really you can do so much more than that. That's sort of, it's sort of been done before. Um, like I've seen on uh, Pinterest, I think, uh, uh, so in a um, uh, sort of mild climate somewhere, they've uh, strung up loads of air plants and sort of created like a curtain using using sort of clump mm. forming tillandsias. Mm. Um, but I think it's using the plants that we've got uh, in new creative ways and uh, maybe trying to go up for a slightly bigger scale on things rather than um, rather than sort of uh, a pot in the corner of the room I think it would be nice to have these you know planted displays with uh, and you can do it anywhere now with um, with uh, grow lights which mm. are you know LED and cheap to run um, so I think it's just down to the individual really mm, and mm. Uh, uh, if if we can showcase new ways of doing things then maybe that will keep this houseplant trend going well let's hope so I think you're right that there's endless possibilities and it's just a question of being that a little bit more adventurous which is what is really on display in your um, in your home here today and you're right about the scale 
in that I guess I mean it's you're slightly spoiled in that you've got a lovely yes, high yeah, ceilings yeah. Um, and this is quite a large room yeah, yeah. but then but again you don't need to have this many pots you, you could just have that. one large well, pot like if you look at uh, some of James's terrariums and aquascapes they're all on quite a small scale mm. so you, you can take ideas and scale them down or scale them up depending mm. on mm. on your situation but I think um, we sort of have to look at uh, the uh, the 70s was a time when houseplants were really fashionable uh, and why I mean we sort of know why they've come back again now uh, and gained popularity but we have to look at the technology uh, I mentioned lighting uh, but the technology available to us now the plants that are available to us now um, and use use them in in sort of more exciting ways I think that there are sort of uh, unlimited uh, options available and that's what I'd like to see mm. on social media more of that yeah I think that's a, that's a very interesting observation I'm kind of sick of seeing the same set of pots and the same kind of white room with a mm. with a fiddle, fiddle leaf fig in the corner in a basket mm. I've said this before mm. on the show mm. um, and yeah th- I guess I guess that's the thing about Instagram is that it's very easy to see something and just think that's how it has to be you can get that image just stuck in your mm. mind um, and yet th- there is some innovation I'll tell you one thing I saw mm. there's, a, there's a lady yeah. somewhere in Scandinavia on Instagram who has this amazing home and she has a lot of plants and one of the things she did that I loved and I've seen a couple now is where she's taken an old 50s TV set mm-hmm. taken out all the inside mm-hmm. and got grow lights inside it and has cacti yeah. and succulents growing inside yeah yeah. And I think it's so fun and such yes. a clever, clever way yeah. of of kind of recycling and doing something different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that kind well, of thing is. I'm all for uh, these uh, sort of quirky elements, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I think it's good to have the quirky elements, but I think uh, it's good to uh, also. Um, uh, I guess this is the garden designer hat. Of course. It's nice yeah. to have like the the sense of style with it as mm, well. True. Uh, I guess the way she did it must have been quite stylish for you to appreciate. Yeah, it, it like was. That. It w- Yeah, I, I guess I do have a little bit of a, a of a thing for the whimsical though. So probably. <laughs> oh yeah, I <laughs> mean I do as well. You saw I, my my toucan up there yes, on the shelf. I love the yeah. toucan. Yeah. The toucan is awesome. Yeah. I guess what I want to try to avoid, and there's nothing wrong with this, but when you go into a big hotel chain and you see like mm. a foyer display of houseplants, mm. I kind of want to avoid my displays mm. looking like that. Mm. I mean, I guess I should, perhaps I should be aspiring to that because they're usually nice and healthy and, and lovely and lush. But it's just that kind of slightly dead look, or mm. I, dead's not the right word because obviously the plants aren't dead. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it feels yeah. a bit kind of too corporate and. Um, I, I, that's what I kind of want yeah. to avoid. Well, I think I think probably the probably what we should sort of really be aiming for is sort of a cross section of different styles rather than. Uh, and I think it's Instagram's fault mm. is that we're seeing the same ideas just being done over and over again. Yeah. Uh, as people take the same ideas and just sort of copy mm. them. Mm. Uh, I think people should uh, should just get really creative and think outside the box. Um, uh, I mean, I think a couple of the pots here would look quite good in a hotel foyer, but then other pots are, you know, quite mm. quite sort of, um, uh, you know, you would only find them in a, a, a house like my. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I've been fascinated by the revival in the old. Um, I think it's called lava pots. Those German pots that, mm. you, like, back when I was a kid, like two mm. a penny, pick them up at a jumble sale. And I saw them the other day. Something popped up on Facebook um, for some, you know, vintage uh, products outlet. Mm. And I'm thinking, blimey. 50 quid for that pot that you know in the 70s mm. would have was just and all of these things are coming back in and kind I think of being. I have one. 
on that oh, bottom yeah. shelf there. Yeah, is that being, one? sort of yes, that kind of thing. Okay. Suddenly being, um, you know, a, a, a cachet being attached to things that in the yeah. past. I guess I guess I'm old enough that I can remember the seventies just about. I so, don't believe you. I, well, <laughs> I, I'm not embarrassed. I, I was so I, I was born in seventy four, so I was okay. young in the in the seventies. But yeah. I, you know, lots of things. Obviously, I mean, fashion moves slowly. Yes. There are some things I do wish that uh, I still had from my parents' house. You know, there's lots of things that now I would desire mm. and, and mm. would be very desirable, copper pans and things like that. Mm. But um, And in fact, looking at your conch shells is making me very nostalgic. Are they conch shells? Yes. Or, um, yes. Making me very nostalgic for my mm. nanny's house because she had mm. one in her spare room and I remember holding it up to my ear and listening to, in inverted commas, yeah, the sea. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In fact, that's a lovely. That it, it's not got. Oh, it has got a phalaenopsis on the top there, and it's got yeah. a Wardian case type terrarium on there. I love that bookshelf. Yeah, well, I think. Tell me I, about that. Um, the, the shelves. Yeah, uh, or the whole thing. The, the whole, whole. Yeah, the whole thing. I uh, uh, that was an eBay purchase. I um, need to spend more time on eBay, like well, you. You obviously no, do very no, well. No, you I do. Don't, I don't. I don't buy huge amounts, but. Um, uh, a couple of my, well, a few of my favourite sort of uh, uh, things I've bought on eBay. Mm. And I think it just ties in kind of with the um, whole hipster thing, because the hipsters sort of bring back sort of uh, all the retro items and that sort of thing. Uh, and um, that's sort of the style in the room is sort of a bit of retro and a bit of quirky stuff. Um, uh, which sort of appeals to me, yeah. Um, no, but I think it's a bit like, like the um, uh, I didn't say with the lamp. Uh, I drilled a hole in the base of the seventies um, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 bottle garden, um, but that's like a seventies sort of sort of throwback. But I've sort of modernised that, and I think that's it. We need to take lots of ideas from the past and bring them up to up to date and then maybe even like go like a bit fu- more futuristic with things like um i guess with the grow lights and that sort of thing mm. that's like um modern technology and technology that's that's going to be used to sort the of way into the future mm. um so yeah, no, I like all the all the sort of retro stuff. I've not found the right TV to hollow out and plant up yet, but uh, it could happen. If you'd like to hear more from Rob, then you're in luck if you happen to be one of my ledge ends because there's an extra leaf episode dropping now on my Patreon feed where you can hear about Rob's aquascaping and also a couple of the other plants in his living room. And do check out the show notes at janeperone.com for some gorgeous images of Rob's plants. That's all for this week's show. I'll be back next week with more houseplant loveliness. Goodbye. The music you heard in this week's episode was Roll Jordan Roll by the Joy Drops an instrument the boy called Happy Day Gakana by Samuel Corwin, and Plantation by Jason Shaw, all licensed under Creative Commons. See janeperone.com for details.